Hello, Sebastian here, showmethat.com, Wheatworks Pro. Today we got the gospel guy, a.k.a. Randy Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> or, or should we say it the other way? Randy Jenkins, a.k.a. the gospel guy. <laughs> he's here with us today, and he's going to share some things with us with sounds and, and software. And like I was telling him earlier, I said, a lot of times we buy keyboards and we kind of gravitate around the internal sounds and we never go beyond that. And then when we get tired of those sounds, we say, oh man, this keyboard's no good. I need yeah. to go get me a new keyboard. It don't yeah. sound right. But there's a lot of things in here and you're going to open up some of that to us today. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like we always talk about, we always talk about gear when, when we see each other. And, um, you know, I'm a gear junkie. junkie. Like I just... Uh, <laughs> You know, I'd be on the forums, I'd be on the, you know, Craigslist, eBay, you know, used Guitar Center and Sam Ash, just looking for something. Even mm -hmm. if I'm not buying, I'm, I'm looking. You're lucky. Um, and I, I, you know, I constantly say, you know, I tell guys, Yo, do your homework, you know, know what's out there, know which keyboard does what. You know, right. the motif is what we call a rompler. It's like your meat and potatoes keyboard. It's got all of the sample sounds on like a ROM chip, basically. Um, and you know, you got your piano, uh, electric piano, organ, which I don't know who should be, nobody should be using. Nobody should be playing organ key, keyboard on a organ. keyboard. <laughs> um, not in gospel. Yeah. But, um, yeah we uh, talked about that. It just uh, yeah, it's don't sound good. Yeah, it's don't sound. It's not good. They haven't mastered that yet in no, the keyboard. not yet. They, they not haven't yet. quite. They've done, they've come a long Close. way with the piano. I remember when I first got my DX7, I <clears> thought that piano <throat> was like the greatest and then I, I got this sound set from this company e matter mm. they used to make sounds oh, for yeah. the dx7 oh, yeah. you would put their their board inside the yeah. dx7 and man you thought you, you was the greatest they upcharge the, for that now if you get a dx7 with the e matter with they, the e -matter, they, they, they charge upcharge. extra yeah. yeah yeah but back then that was the greatest piano then after that the m1 came out mm -hmm. and then that blew that away Ooh. but we, we've come a long mm -hmm. way from those keyboards. They've come a long way with the pianos. Right. But one thing they haven't gotten is those organs. Those organs, so. ain't, they're not right. <laughs> you know, um, but like I said, you know, you just go through, I just, you know, I get a keyboard, um, whether I buy it or get my hands on it for whatever reason. If, if I'm not familiar with it, I'll go through every single sound. So if it has like 2,000 sounds, I'll go through the 2,000 two sounds. It won't be like I'm spinning you know, forever in a day playing, but I'm just kind of like, you know, going through. And what I'm looking for is something that's going to catch my mm -hmm. creativity. It's going to make me go, oh, okay, what, let me, let me, you know, let me, let me play. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. And um, once I get a handle on what the keyboard can do, you know, piano-wise, electric piano-wise, strings, you know, um, I'm looking for a sound that's got a little bite or something I could use. You know, that's got some some guts. Um, you know, I'll go to like the synth brass section, and um, so we just go here. Let's do a category search. In the XS and the XF, you get a category search like the classic and the ES, mm -hmm. but you get like these subcategories, and you can do like you know, um, if I'm in the brass, you, know, you can do solo and you know, uh, brass ensemble, which is like your back in the day, you know kind of like Kevin Bond brass patches where you would play mm -hmm. almost, you know, sound like a four-piece or five-piece, you know, brass band. Yeah. Um, then you got your orchestral sounds like French horn, all that kind of stuff. Then you got your synth brass. Um, and so, you know, you know, synth brass is cool. You know, get a bunch of different textures from the old boards, in the, you know, from the 80s. You know, the, uh, the Jupiter 8 and, the, you know, Oberheim, you know, OB8 and, you know, bunch of different you know profit five you know those kind of those kind of boards it was I synths a, i saw a profit 10 at rogue today he had the two tier profit 10 how much at, well he said he was given a special deal because he said it's a profit 10 but it's a profit five right now because only five voices ah uh. <laughs> he said something's going on where the other voices aren't working uh, mm. so you're like, well, if you want a profit five, you can get a profit five. But <laughs> um, what he said, what was he, what was he giving? Um, he never gave me a price, but he said he he would do something if somebody really wanted it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, those old boards are amazing. They are, 
They are. And the sad thing is they sound so good, but they're so temperamental. Yeah. You got, because of the electronics and the way they were built. You know, I, I, I went through, um, I was saying before, I had like two MKS-20s. You know, the parts are 30-something years old. It's, they're becoming obsolete. You, yeah. you can't get the parts. It's, it's just like, you know, so, you know, I, I stick with these things. So anyway, you got the, you know, synth brass and... You know, you just go through them. You find the one you like. You're like, okay, I'm, I can rock with that. I can work with this. Um, and after a while, that kind of gets boring. Um, but what I like to do is I like to go into some categories that some guys may not know. And that's kind of what I want to focus on today. Um, making sounds out of sounds that we don't normally use. Because that will give you, your imagination and your creativity a, a new lift. And, you know it'll give you a unique uh, connection with your keyboard. Um, you should buy a keyboard that's an extension of your personality, musically. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, uh, you know, I'm more of a, I'm not going to maul you to death. I, I would rather, you know, bite and then move on and you looking at me like, what just happened? And then 10 minutes later, you down on the ground. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm not a lion. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm more like a, some kind of deadly, you know, uh, bug or something. Uh, something <laughs> a, a, a snake or, <laughs> or something. something yeah. that's gonna get you. You know, <laughs> I'm a little more subtle, but it's but it's still nasty. And so, um, you know, that's why I love the V-Synth because I can get you know subtle nuances. But if I need to get grimy, I I can do yeah. that. We gotta um, do something. On, you gotta bring the V-Synth one day. We gotta do something yeah. on that board one day. <laughs> it's a tough that, board. That is like the <laughs> secret weapon. That's a tough board. Yeah. Yeah, so um, what I like to do is, um, you know, on all my keyboards, uh, I like to go to the lead sounds. Um, not every lead sound works, mm-hmm. but you get some that are really good. So I'll just you know, go through one, you know, and see, you know, what I like, what I would like. And that's kind of cool. You know, but I wouldn't necessarily play chords with that. But I'm looking, I'm looking, you know. And this is just how I pick. I just go through, t- you know, tapping the key. That's kind of cool. Through, yeah, That's kind of nice. Kind of nice. Um, and I'm just going through real quick. Okay, I kind of like that. I'll keep that in mind in the ni- in the night. <laughs> um, uh, self R and B. Kind of like that too. I heard that up earlier. Wind synth. All right, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go to in the night because I kind of like that. In in the night. Um. Okay, so let's do this. All right, so. I hit enter, right? So hit now enter. I got that patch okay. select, selected, right? First thing I want to do is I want to turn off the reverb and delay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to hit effect, and I'm going to scroll over, or scroll down, rather, to delay, and I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to turn the reverb off. So now... So your purpose in doing that because you want to hear the true I sound. I want to hear the sound, yeah, right? Yeah. Or at least without the the added room like i don't, yeah. don't want to hear that because that gets in the way of layering too yeah you know you and i'm layering, and i'm yeah. thinking i'm going to be layering the sound with something else mm-hmm. so you know i got to make sure this is right all right so that's cool um so now what i would do is um i do want to hear a little bit of chorus um so let's do let's let's uh select this to be chorus and uh um, chorus just makes things, you know, a little fatter. All right, so I got that happening, right? Mm-hmm. So now what I want to do is I want to exit out of that, and I want to go to edit. All right, so I'm going to hit edit, because in order to play, you know, chords, we're going to have to adjust some things. So we're going to go to um, control. No, I'm sorry. Um edit and it is eluding me at the moment play mode okay so let me back out of that and and that's another thing you gotta tell people about this keyboard it's tricky if you go 
to certain things from certain modes, you right. get different things. Right, right. So. And you, you have to you have to really you gotta really pay attention to the tabs. Um and like you said, I can be if I was in like I was in effect, it put me in edit mode. And I was I I'm just so used to hitting edit first and then doing what I need to do. I hit edit from the main screen and it automatically jumped me into the edit mode. So when I went looking for certain buttons, they weren't there. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm gonna hit edit. Back to that same page. Let's 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 go back out. So we got our sound. But we gotta do some editing. So I'm gonna hit edit, right? Gen uh general, right? And in the play mode tab, the general you got name, other, and play mode. All right. So I want to go over to play mode. I want to change this mono to poly. All right. So mono is notes. mono is um one. Huh? Singular. One. Singular. It's uh mono, it stands for monophonic. So one, one sound, one voice. All right. And then you get poly, which is polyphonic. All right. So now I'm able to play chords. Mm -hmm. All right. It's cool, but it's still it's lifeless. Mm -hmm. You know, so we got there's some other things we gotta do to add some 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 uh you know life. All right, so I'm going to add some portamento. All right, portamento is really good. It's basically the slide between one from one note. So if I just exaggerate it, you'll hear. See, nothing happened. You see it slowly rising. All right, so if I turn that down. So we're getting somewhere. All right. So let's say um, I'm going to do the time mode. Uh, and we want to do uh, full time. Uh, actually, let's, let's do that finger so I can get a note straight. And then I can just hit one note and it'll bend instead of the whole thing bending. All right. And I'm going to turn this down some more because we just want it to be subtle. We don't want it to be too crazy. We just want a little bit of grime. A little smear happening. All right. So we got that going. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, control set. All right. And um, I'm, I personally, like I said in the other video, love aftertouch. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the this is basically a source matrix or, 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 or an assignment matrix every keyboard has this every like you know pro board has a, something to this degree and basically what's happening is you get a source which could be any of these buttons any of these controllers and you get the destination or the effect so this controller controls this function mm -hmm. right so an LFO is basically something moving in the board all right you got a sound an oscillator is the sound that's the cycle of the sound right but then the lfo is something that's making the sound Wave you know kind of go back and forth yeah. in, in in dummies terms like you know what i'm saying um and i encourage you to go uh you know there's plenty of websites i went to you can even actually do like wikipedia will explain to you the, the various uh synths Term, you know, yeah. at, at between you know additive synth, subtractive synth, you know um, FM synthesis. You know it'll go through all of those things. It'll go through the waveforms between sawtooth, sine wave, square wave, triangle. You know you'll get to. We'll be here all day mm -hmm. if I was to explain yeah. all that stuff. It'll, you know LFO, envelope filters. You know the whole nine yards. Um, so I just encourage you to just kind of get into it a little bit because it'll really help you. You know doing this stuff. Um, so anyway, um, LFO. Can can control pitch. It can control volume. Uh, it can control, you know, um, uh, the the course tune, meaning, you know, uh, from C to D or C to you know, mm -hmm. D flat. Or it can do just fine tune like C and in between like some microtonal, you know, microtonal stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I'm gonna I want my um aftertouch 
to control the LFO and the pitch. So I'm scrolling to find it. And I want element element LFO pitch modulation. That's what the E dash LFO PMD stands for. So you see now, when I play the note, nothing happens. If I push down, <laughs> okay? Now if I change that, nothing happens. I'm pushing, but nothing's going on. But, if, but I have it on mod wheel if I go like that. Can you hear it? Okay? So I want that to be... All right. Now we don't want so much, we're going to turn the depth down. Okay? Give it a little wiggle. Right. So you say, oh, that's cool, but it's a little bit too... It's a little too fast for my taste. Mm -hmm. All right? So I'm going to get out of that. All right? I'm going to go to... Matter of fact, I'm going to go back to edit. All right? I'm going to go to, to general. Now, when you hit... Um, we're, right now, we're in common edit, so it's affecting all of the parameters that are all of the voices that are in this one sound. A lot of guys don't know, you know, when you when you have a, a board and it says 128 note polyphony, but that's cool, but really one note could be, if you press down on this C, that really could be like three or four notes playing at the same time. Exactly. You can run out of polyphony real quick, real quick. When you, once you start stacking. Stuff. Exactly. So uh, we want to go into these elements. All right, we just go, so to get out of that, out of common edit, we're just going to hit one and we'll go to the first element two second element three second a uh, third element four and so on however many elements to the sound they are all right so i'm going to go to element lfo all right and i'm just going to i'm just going to go down about five so let's see 33 down to 33 got to do these for each element down to 33 and down to 33 what else is here I don't think there's anything on that though. So it's a little slower. All right, now it's still a little bit too aggressive for me. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to to edit, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to common. All right, hit that common button again because you'll be mm -hmm. lost. Go to common. All right, and I'm gonna go to the control set, and I'm gonna just turn this down just a little bit, maybe like two. Okay. Now we 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 almost there. All right. Now what I, what I what I like to do also is before I get messed up, I'm gonna store it because I will lose it. Lose it. You sit there and you hit the wrong button. And that's and all that work. So every so often you 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 go to we'll save. you go to save. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to get some of that mid range junk out so it doesn't sound so boxy. All right. So I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to um let's get out of this. All right. Play mode. You don't have to go to edit to go to EQ, but if you want to EQ each element, then you could you can do that as well um, here. But I don't want to do that. I just want to EQ the whole thing. So I'm going to go to um, EQ here. And like I said, that mid tab, what I like to do is just turn up, turn the, freq turn the um, gain up, excuse me, on the frequency so I can hear exactly where the frequency is that I don't want. So you do like a sweep. So okay, right there, get right in that, right in that low mid range. Five, you know, getting into the mid range five between four and six hundred hertz, maybe even a little bit of seven. All right. So when you get in here, that's really where it's five, five hundred. That's annoying. So you want to pull that down. Hmm. Right, so now I got all right. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Let's add some a little bit of highs. Let's see what happens when we open up the cutoff. Okay, let's turn that resonance down. Still a little nasally, so I don't like that. So this would be if I kept this sound, this would be a sound that I would have underneath. Underneath something, something else. All right, yeah. so let's 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 store that with the new um thing here, and let's let's go to another sound. Another thing I like to do is go to bass, um, because a lot of guys don't know bass. Bass sounds really good sometimes when it's 
you know, played Turn and uh, poly, play. polyphonic, yeah. right? Um, now I already know this sound. I'm not picking this sound at random, um, but I'm giving y'all one of my sounds, and it's <laughs> all good. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not afraid. Uh, it's, it's all good. It's, I, I don't mind sharing at all. Um, all right, so it's called bass pedal. It's in the XS. It's in the S90XS. It's in the XF. This this board here. I'm not sure. I don't think it's in the um, ES or the or the, or or the, the vintage, classic. The classic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's a dope sound, uh, and I use it as a as a pad. All right, so it's a bass, and I think it's made from the. I think it's an emulation of like the the Moog Taurus pedals because mm -hmm. it's got that vibe. All right. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go through the same process. Hit enter. All right. We're going to go to um, edit, right? And we want to get out of this. Go to common because we were in element. You see, I hit, when I hit L edit, this screen came up. I was like, whoa, what's going on? You got to remember, go to common so you can get to the, all the common elements and edit it all at one time. So I want to go to general, all right? Scroll up, poly. That sounds a little crazy. All right, let's do, let's do um, note shift. All right. That's cool. Let's take a listen to the elements, though. All right. So let's let's edit this. And let's see what's happening. You pull these um little faders down. All right. So nothing on the fourth one. Nothing on the second one. We have two. So All right. Basically, that's just a two voice sound. Right. A two voice sound. You get it. You can start with a, get a nice blend with this. All right. Now, if I want, I can go to edit, right? Comma edit. We did the note shift already, but I can do I can do this. Um, let's go to common. I mean, um, element edit. Right. I can make this. So if you want to get tricky, you know. I don't know how anybody don't like sound, man. I could do this all day long. <laughs> Alright, so, so we got minus twelve, right? Now that's playing exactly the same note. Okay, before it was playing an octave higher. Alright, so we're gonna go down. Um, I have a plane of fifth now. It's a little weird. So let's go back up. Alright, I could do that, but for me, I'm just gonna keep it at the octave. Alright? I changed the sense. Remember I said course tune is like going up like transposing, which is a no-no. <laughs> Alright, so. You know, going up by whole half steps. But then you have this fine tune, which goes up, goes up and down by synth, synths. So it starts getting slowly off. Now, what's dope about that is you can have a sound the same pitch, slightly detuned. One slightly detuned, and you get a, a nice little rub. Almost creates like a chorus effect. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm gonna do is okay. So we got that happening. Now let's go back to comp, comma edit. All right. Now let's go to control set because this is something that a lot of guys may not pay attention to. Um. Sometimes this mod wheel. See, it just oh, yeah. it took my sound away. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Because it it is a sign to have the cutoff, Cut off, so. the filter. You know, almost, just, you know, completely take away the sound. So I'm gonna get rid of that because I like I like my pads not to move at all. Mm -hmm. So if I so I have something else going on, like if I have a module or something, and I flip this this modulation wheel, my pad stays constant. All right, so I'm gonna keep that, and I'm gonna go to this uh, envelope and EQ and turn this resonance down. Which I almost always do because I don't like nasally sounds. 
okay. Alright, we'll go down to my EQ. Get some of that mid-range out the way. Bring some, back, some of it back. Let's take some of the lows away. Okay, now you see how it's bleeding over, right? So I want to, now some of that's coming from the effect. Some of it's coming from the release time. Mm -hmm. I remember I said ADSR. All right, so you got attack, decay, sustain, release. All right, mm -hmm. um, so release. Basically what happens is when you have a sound, right, the attack, um, you know, it's, again, I would encourage you to do your homework, but in the, the short of it is this. You have the attack, when the, when the note actually projects, then you have decay, over how long time, the notes what happens right and the then the sustain when it stays wherever the decay mm -hmm. stops and then um release when it drops off. drops off so you have a you have a thing like a little mountain almost you know it comes mm -hmm. down or like a you know any you know any way you you want to configure it all right so so you hear bleeding because that's the delay happening i changed the release you know i'll turn the release up so my hands off the board and it's still sound oh, no. Right? We don't want that. And every sound is different. You know, mm -hmm. pianos, I do like negative four. But see, I still get, a, if I'm at negative four now, I still get a little like sound. I don't want that. You know, so I go down to like negative 13 for pads. Right? You like it to cut and just. Right, so if I'm running. I, I I get I get that. All right, let me go to the effect because that's getting on my nerves. That delay. I turn that <laughs> off. All right. Okay. So let's make this. Let's get a little more happening here. Turn this cutoff down a little bit. Okay. So now I got that sound happening. All right. I'm gonna store it. And um. Let's do, uh, I guess we can leave it there for now. All right, so I'm storing it. All right, now I'm going to do one more sound. All right, just to layer it later on. We'll do, um, let's do a regular, I don't know, Rhodes. Yeah, something with a bell, sort of. Um, so we'll do, we'll do uh, keys. All right, I know a lot of guys like this. They like this uh, ballad key. And I hear a lot of guys, a lot of guys using that. So we'll use that, all right? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that uh, release time. That was what you was talking about in the last video, so now people will get to understand what you mean by effective release time. Right, so I got that happening. That's cool. Um, not quite my taste, but it's it's it's, it's good for right now. All right, we're gonna so we're gonna use this, right? Um, let me take these highs down a little bit. It's just a little bit too bright, and some of the mid tones. And I'm gonna move this uh, frequency range up a little bit to about anywhere. Mid Let's see, now it's starting to mellow out. Nice round kind of like sounds not as boxy. All right. Turn his highs up a little bit. All right, so I'm good. I'm gonna save that. <laughs> All right. Save that to um, A11. All right. So now I got all these sounds saved. Mm -hmm. Now I want to put them together. All right, so now go you to, have to go to performance. Got to go to performance, mode. all right? So and it's almost like you're building a house. You're taking each sound and, and shaping it the way you want. Mm -hmm. It's almost like when they make bricks, and then you're going to put the brick, brick into mm -hmm. the house. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, um, I just do a initialize, 
just because it's easier to just start from scratch. Um, so we're going to do initial, go to, I'm sorry, go to job. It's the first thing that comes up is initialize, hit enter, hit yes. All right. Now it's just going to be a basic piano. All right. So let's go, let's go to my man showed me this Julius DeBerry. It's my dude. <laughs> um, he, um, uh, he put me on this, to a lot of stuff, man. Dude is smart as could be. Um, he's, um, one of the uh, keyboard techs for Prince. Dope cat. Um, and uh, he put me onto this, um, you know, a while ago. When you when you when you bring a patch in on old motifs, you didn't have to do this. Whatever your that sound was that you saved, problem you were telling me you were running into before, and you were trying to do some programming, you were saving something, but it wouldn't. It wasn't playing the way right. The I way would spend all this time making a sound. I would bring it into performance mode, and it wouldn't work mm -hmm. it wouldn't sound so you know, on the these same. machines it's different there's a, on the right, XF. there's a certain thing you have to make sure it's on all right so we're going to do um edit all right you're going to go to element edit not common edit but element edit we're going to go to voice all right you're going to make sure that parameter with voice is on otherwise it's not going to bring in the stuff that you say mm -hmm. Whatever patch you're getting ready to bring in, it'll bring in all of the parameters with that voice. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to um, my user, user category, all right? And we're going to find that sound, which was ballad keys 11. Now, see, it's there, how I made it. Now, the difference is um, performance has its own uh, effects. So I'm just going to turn the reverb off, no effect, and no effect. Okay. All right. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, edit. Element edit for number two. Right. Parameter with voice. Right. I'm going to go to user. I think it was uh, user two. And I think it was number 12. Yeah. In the night. All right. Part switch on. LFO is only happening on that one sound. It's not happening across all the right. sounds. Right, just that one that I made. Oh, oh, all right. In actuality, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch that sound uh, to the to the uh, pad sound I made from the bass, just because uh, I like to go in order. I'm just a little bit anal like that. <laughs> um, I can't remember where I saved it. Uh, maybe it was in user two. Ah, uh, uh, shoot. I forgot where I saved it. So I go, I was simple. Mm -hmm. I just go to category search, right? Go to base because it's in the, even I'm using it as a pad, it's in the base category. Okay. So I'll just go to synth base You'll be able and to find look, it. look for it in the user. Um, you know, just keep scrolling until I get to the user section in the synth bass category and I'll just look for more, my sound and there it is all right so we hit enter sound is there all right I kind of like how that's formulated all right and I just want to get my sounds in here all right so we do element three voice on right part switch on it's off but turn it on Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to play. And then we're going to do um, parameter with voice. We're going to go to voice and go to our user bank. And I remember that was user 2. We're going to look for that. And it's in, in the night. These programmers are hilarious. <laughs> Sometimes, if I'm not paying attention, I'm moving too quickly. I'll be thinking I'm I'm editing 
one element when I'm yeah, editing the other. It, it, it's like you gotta always pay attention. You gotta pay attention. Yeah, because you can it's, get confused. Right. Okay, so now this is cool, but it's not quite right. It's not mm. quite where I want it to be. So I'm gonna do some editing uh, further. Um, I'm gonna go to edit. I'm gonna edit the piano. get into this EQ some more pull some of these mids down make it beef it up a little bit put some lows mm. I wanted to have a little more bite so I'm gonna go up Now by itself, it doesn't sound that good. But I'm looking, I'm looking to layer. All right, so I'll bring, I'll bring the pad in, edit this pad. All right, get some of that boxiness out. Go to. Down here. All right, and I'll go to um. See, I almost did it. I almost, <laughs> yeah, I was crazy. The Can't be too hasty. So we really want to pull those mids out. This is distraction. All right. Let's bring some of these lows down. I'm gonna change the frequency to that so it'll affect more of the low mids. So you get underneath. So you can't really hear the sound by itself because I got the I got the pad in there, right? Yeah, that, that sounds so fat the way that. But if I push down, you hear this. Some kind of undercurrent, like rub. Mm -hmm. That's so smooth. All right. <laughs> so now, so now, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I got one more thing to do. I'm gonna go for that sound, right? I'm gonna go to effect. No. Um, edit. Um, yeah. Sorry. So edit. I'm gonna go to effect, and I'm gonna get me a little. type of stuff would you use that sound on? A, a, a regular song. A regular it could be a worship song, it could be, you know, um, you know, a mid tempo. Cause I guess know. the crazy thing about that sound is although it's a piano, it has that sustained tone. So like if you're not playing with an organist, right. it'll kinda give you that fullness. It's full. That is you don't you feel like I'm not missing anything. No, and what's crazy is this is just one board. Just one if board. If you got your computer like I use, or you got another module which I have, you know, you get you get, you know, the guts from here. Right? Then you add little nuances from, you know, um now let me show you something with with this ADSR, because this the sound is a little annoying. Right? So what I'm gonna do is um for this element here, for the for that third lead sound in in the night. I'm mm -hmm. gonna, I'm gonna adjust uh, the decay, and I want you to hear. All right, here's the sound. It's just holding, 
Alright. So you get the initial attack, yeah, attack and then, and then it starts falls off. the volume starts dropping. See now you hear that? Nothing just there, yeah. tap, you just hear you just hear the attack. But 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 right. And if I turn the decay up and it just stops. Cause it's not the sustain yeah. is not holding it. Yeah, I guess you can't gotta kinda know exactly what part of the sound do you, you wanna want. hear. Right. Yeah. Now I wanna adjust the sustain because it's holding and I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I want it just to be just a little bit, hold just a little bit, a little bit and, and then, then kind of get, get out the way. That's a little too much. Okay, so let's hear what it sounds like. They get more of the pad. You hear that rub, but then it goes away. Yeah. So I'm not getting that eh, that nasally jump yeah. at the end. You know? I'm getting. I guess almost when you look at sound design like this, you almost have to think of it this way. When you bake a cake, most of the ingredients that you put in there, they may be good ingredients. Right. But you can't just, just oh, let me put the whole thing of sugar in here. Let me put the whole thing of butter because it's going to taste better. Nah. No, it's not. No, no, and no. And I no, noticed no. when you were programming, it was like you use certain things very sparingly. Right. And by itself, you're like, well, that's not really doing a lot. Right. But then when it all came together, together. Right. it's like it's just right. And you got to know, that's why I said you got to you gotta pick a keyboard. Do not buy the latest keyboard because it's the latest keyboard. <laughs> Get <laughs> Do your homework, you know. Like, I searched and searched and searched because I was jonesing, like, you know, several years ago when the M3s came out. I was like, oh, my gosh, mm -hmm. I got to have... Just because it was white. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, it's crazy-looking you know, keyboard when the thing cranks up but in the yo, middle. But, yo, you know crazy? I went and played it, and I was like, yo, this keyboard is crazy. And, um, you know, I just wanted it. And I was, like, doing all this research, 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 research. And I remember trying out a V-Synth years before the, the, the M3 came out um, back in 2003. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was such a Roland fan at that time. I'm, oh, it's a new Roland keyboard. I'm thinking it's going to have all these dope strings and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was this weird stuff. And I was like, this is whack. And the guy, sales guy was like, well, it's not really a, you know. Meat and potatoes. It's not that kind board. of synth. Yeah. And I wasn't really into synthesis back then. Back then I was, you know, still playing drums. And I was making beats and stuff, so. You know, that's kind of why I was on the keyboard tip in the first place. But, um, you know, it didn't have what I was looking for. And I'm going on these forums, searching about the M3. And this guy was like, you know, bump the M3, you need to get a V-Synth. He was, you know, in little forums. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, V-Synth? I remember that. What's up with that? So I did some more research on that. By that time, I was into keys. And my ear was, was more geared sure. to what the sound, right. And I was like, oh, this keyboard is crazy. So I went and bought one. I bought the the first version, and then um, wound up getting the GT some years later, and I love them. Um, but it is I I before I bought it, I did a lot of research yeah. on what I was looking for. Yeah, don't don't you know? buy impulsively, or it's like yo, I like the color. Yeah, nah. or, or I heard oh, yeah. some guy playing it, and yeah. and <laughs> he sounded dope playing it. And sometimes we buy into things mm -hmm. for the craziest reasons. Uh -huh. Or or it'd be like oh. Oh, it's light. It's lightweight. I could take this every. What good is yeah. taking a keyboard everywhere if you sound horrible on it? <laughs> like I'd rather carry a fifty-pound board and know it's, um, I'm just going to do the it's job. Gonna sound like you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know, uh, just find out what your musical voice is. You know, God gave us all musical gift. Um, you know, and He's going to give us space to articulate the voice that's inside of us. But we got to find that creative voice. We got to find what speaks for us. What what we can relate to, you know what I'm saying? What pers you know, musical personality types we have, you know? Not everybody's going to be able to pull off the Mike Burrell thing because you don't have that certain Well, Well, you thing. know, I want to say something about that, and that's one of the problems that musicians have, and it even goes beyond the sounds. It goes mm -hmm. into playing. Mm -hmm. When you're first learning, mm -hmm. you tend to emulate people. And you see people, that. and there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. because you're learning. But what we have to learn is not try to sound like that one person through no. our whole music. Grow into what God put into right. you right, and be unique. But 
I think a lot of times we're scared to be ourselves. It's more safe to sound like so and so, like Mike Burrell, Listen, or, or try to get this chop that that Corey did right. or that Travis did, and people, oh man, that's Corey, that's Travis, that's Mike Burrell. But at the end of the day, it's not you. Right. You know. You know what's crazy is um, you know, I'm a I'm a, I tell people all the time, if you do not want me to learn it, don't play it around me, because I'm <laughs> I'm going to steal. I'm I'm going to take from you, whether it's your sound whether it's your, the way you play, whether it's a chord voicing, because my thing is I want to be the best I can, and my biggest asset is are my ears mm -hmm. and the ability to, to be able to learn, learn quick. quickly. I can hear something and be like, oh, yeah, and then plus, you know, I went to school so I can kind of understand the theory behind it. I know what a dominant chord is. I know what an altered chord is. I know so I can kind of hear, like, oh, that's Structure. a major, you know, whatever, and just grab the chord. Mm -hmm. um, and because I'm such a nerd, I can hear a sound and be like, oh, he used a Kurzweil. Oh, he used a Roland. Oh, he used a, that's a fan. Oh, that's a, you know, and I'll just mm -hmm. go to the board and, and get it. Mm -hmm. But you're right. For years and years and years, when I first started getting into the whole West Coast thing, you know, out here in, on the East Coast in New York, it's all about running, you know, John Peters, Being. playing <laughs> out voices, changing the h harmony. You know, nobody, let's be real. In your face. Nobody was reharmonizing. <laughs> Like that until John <laughs> Peters, John Peter and we was doing that from since I was a little boy. So let's just kill that right there. <laughs> um, but, but but the crazy thing is, you know, New York cats don't really get any respect like that. Like Corey and Travis are like one of the few dudes. You know, you got some other cats coming up like Glenn, some other dudes. Um, but you know, New York dudes don't really get the respect because they don't make good records. That's just what it they is. They sound good by themselves. You put them on an organ, they're gonna wear you out, wear you out. But they they don't sound good together. Yeah. Or they don't know how to put a whole record together. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody yeah. just wants to. Yeah. It sounds and crazy. It's like you know? I told somebody. I feel that mentality grew out of economics. Mm -hmm. When you look at New York City churches, the average church, right. the average church, they wear from fifty to 150 members. If you got 250, you're almost like a mega church right. in New Seriously. York. Seriously. And I know that Seriously. might sound crazy to you, <laughs> but if you go into a New York church and you got 250, that's, oh my God, yeah, that's doing, a large church. Yeah. So just because of economic structure, most churches, they can't pay a whole band. Right, and this and this is what, this this all was birthed out of necessity. Yeah, Because yeah. I was at a church, it, it was a, it was my home church, the church where I grew up, it was, you know, at its peak, it was like 150, you know right. what I'm saying? But it was, it, it averaged like, you know, on a given Sunday, 75, 80, 500, yeah, 100, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, um, you know, the, the pastor that raised me, you know, she was good to us to an extent. She was very, very, very hard, but she was good to us to an extent. She paid us, you know, when the money was up, she paid us according, mm -hmm. you know, so it was cool. But as I grew, there were some things I wanted to do with, with this stuff that, being in an old school church, they like they get on all the they want here is that yeah. organ and drum. Get on the organ, and shut up. Like, they just, might let a bass right. player just, play, just but organ and here. drums. You know, and so um, you know, I had to do that. And when I got to this other church, uh, it was a more affluent church. You know, the the the, the, more the membership yeah. was more progressive, more understanding, um, more worship oriented. And they told me straight up, like, we don't want, we don't, we don't get off the organ. Don't do we don't the, want organ the organ thing. We don't play do the piano, buddy. And so, um, you know, and then I try to be like, well, listen, you know, we need a band, da, 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 this, that, and the other. And uh, they let me get a bass player, um, but they they weren't really interested in paying for anything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to really figure out how can I sound like a record? You know, like I said in the other video, at the time that happened, I was hanging around with Lauren Dawson. We were doing all these open mics and different, you know, showcase things. And um, he just brought me back to that to that period of time as a child I grew up watching you know different dudes in this area yeah, that like were Joe doing that Wilson you know and old cats and yeah. so um you know I had to figure out a way to sound big with a with small just, budget with a small you know? budget and uh, so that's how this stuff came about man and uh, I'm into movie scores I'm into texture I'm into all of that stuff and all of those um you know I'm into, I'm into chick you know uh, S Steve Hunt you know, so many dudes that use sound to enhance their playing ability. Yeah, they yeah. It's not just play. about the technical. Right. The sound is, because I remember when I looked at that first video that Chick did, 
he was it, it, yeah as as much as we know how chick can play right he was very keen on sound exactly. because the way he used the sound it was almost part of an extension of his playing it's his brain it's his it's his musical voice when you hear somebody expression go, you, you know that's chick you already <laughs> like you don't have to guess like you hear that lead sound it's like that's chick you may not know the sound i mean the song but you know the sound yeah. Um. And so, um, and that video helped me out immensely. Electric Workshop. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, hard to find nowadays. Yeah, but those are. I think I have those down in my cellar somewhere. All those old videos from yeah. him and George Duke. Oh my and... God. <laughs> All day long. Them dudes. You know, they were very, very um influential in my playing and in my in the way I viewed keyboard sound. Mm -hmm. You know, when you take that and you take the you know the 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 the, the movie score stuff, you know, I'm into uh, Harry Gregson Williams and, you know, Randy Newman, Thomas Newman and, um, you know, Mike, Michael Giancello. There's a bunch of different dudes that they use. It's not just like, like John Williams is one of the greatest film scorers that I, that we've ever, John he's Williams, amazing. Yeah. I mean, he's but, done so many things, you know, yeah, but he, there's a, there's an element. He's, he's more orchestral than he is anything else. He uses other elements, but these other guys that I named, they use, you know, synthesizers and computer programs and things to kind of, it's a little more modern sounding. And it relates well like in church. Jan, what's that guy, Jan? Is it not Jan Ham? Jan? Uh, uh, Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. Oh, yeah. He's another cat. Incredible. Cap. Yeah. I, I remember when they used to do stories of him. You show his rack. He had like... 2990s, JB. <laughs> I'm like, oh my Yo. god, just one 990 sounds incredible. He had like about 20 of them in the rack. I'm like, oh my god, there's a reason too, you know. They, and those guys, those guys, they, they do, they know what they're doing, you know. And I, I took that approach to playing in church. My, my mentality is I'm scoring the service, and I can't, you can't just score the service from the organ. Yeah, yeah. There's certain moods and certain atmospheres you cannot capture with an organ. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I don't care how much reverb you got, how much you know the draw bars, how much you can play around with the little um, key switches and do your thing. Like, yo, there's certain things you cannot capture. Yeah, like you know? I, I was. Yeah, I was talking to my man Gene. You know, um, Gene Talbert, mm -hmm. little Gene, and he was saying. When he was coming up, he was always on the organ. But now I see him on the keyboard. I said, "Man, what's up with you? You ain't you're not on the organ." He said, "I realize there's so much more you can do with this." Mm -hmm. He said, "You can do a lot of things on the organ, but generally, an organ's gonna give you one type of tone." He says, "The textures and the different mm -hmm. things." He said, "You're really jumping into the keyboard." Right. Right. So you know, again, just find a keyboard that works for you. Find the one. Whether it's a Kronos, you know, my man Julius, he's he's constantly trying to sell me on the Kronos. Kronos. He's talking yeah. to me today. Yo, I just found something else out about the Kronos. Think you <laughs> might like to check out. Man, listen, I'm I think, you know, uh, you know, I I I think I'm good People right here. People are passionate about uh, what they play. You know, and, and that's cool. You yeah, know, there's if nothing it works wrong for you, with that. You know, I, I know I know um Aaron Lindsay he was was hyped about the Kronos when it came out and he's got some I don't I don't know if he used it on Marvin Sapp's record. But the one he just did a year or so ago, but there's some crazy sounds on that yeah, record, yeah. you know. And so, hey, I you think know, he's still using that. And that's, that's people, you know, that's what they do. That's what they do. Board. I like this board. Mm -hmm. This is the board I choose to use. Uh, I was a rolling guy for years, uh, starting to move away from those guys because uh, they need Eric uh, pressing back. <laughs> um, but man, Eric. These, these, this, this, this board right here, you know, I love it. I love the way it sounds. Um, you know, there's so much you could do with it. Um, it's and very, this is just, very versatile, boy. And this is just one sound. You know, yeah. this is one sound. You can get, like I said, get a module, and then you can add some other textural things, some bells or something, some arpeggios. Just or, make it, like, so big. It's crazy. You know, and if you really know what you want to hear and you know how to go after it, the sky's, you can do whatever you want. The sky's the limit. Whatever yeah. you want to do, man. So I hope this helps. Yeah. And um, yeah, definitely. You know, we'll also, be... we want to tell you guys about something else I was looking at. My man Jamal over at gospelmusicians.com, he came out with a ROM set for this that is ridiculous. He put the, the Neo Soul keys. He put the MKS. Yeah, that's crazy. He has, he has the Power Grand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has some of the old 990 horns and stuff. I think he's got the EX5 stuff he in there, too. He got the EX5. Which is a... 
That keyboard is crazy. Killer. So yeah. I, I I tell you, go check that out. You definitely yeah. because stuff like that it'll only bring up the value of your keyboard. It's mm -hmm. like you 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 have your regular sounds and you flip to the user bank and you have those totally different. Like oh my god, it's like I got a new keyboard, but I didn't buy a new right. keyboard. Right. So I definitely would tell you check that out. It's hot. Mm -hmm. I haven't um, checked it out as of yet. I do have his uh, library for, you know, um, my computer, um, but um, I haven't gotten it yet. Um, but it is dope. I have checked. I have checked it out on YouTube. Yeah, I've yeah, checked out some yeah, of the sounds. Yeah, I, I was tough. listening. Yeah, I I just thought the cool thing about it is having all that stuff instantly. You yeah. don't have to load it up. Yeah, it's right there in the uh, boards, in the RAM boards, where you don't even have to worry about loading it up. That that's ridiculous. But as we say in all of our videos, if you really want to play, don't play around. Don't play around. God bless you, and see you next time. All right.